Let's go. Uh, you know one of the things that almost all law school case books have in common, besi besides the fact that they're heavy expensive. and expensive? No graphics, no pictures, no flow charts, uh, concept maps, not even stick, uh, stick figure drawings. And when you go into the classroom, the typical law classroom doesn't have any pictures, at least in the front of the room. What you have are whiteboards that typically either stay white or filled up with words. And I, I think this is a shame because when I was a law student, I really welcomed those graphics that helped me understand or remember an, a concept. And, uh, and so when I became a law professor, I tried to develop graphics that would help my students learn. And as you know, I'm sure, it, there's a lot of trial and error involved, mostly error. Uh, with a lot of graphics crashing and burning, as you see the, un, you know, the, the, the mist not ri raising from your students' eyes. Um, but, but a few survived, lot, usually after lots of reworking, and then would become kind of evergreen material for my courses. So in 2013, I wrote a course book for one of my courses, Administrative Law, and I included in it a lot of the graphics that I had developed in, in 15 years of teaching the course. And so I want to draw on that experience to describe and hopefully to illustrate uh, five features of effective graphics. And the, gra and, the, and the features are that effective graphics are relevant, obvious, simple, coherent as a whole, and engaging. So let me um, illustrate the point by talking about uh, the main graphic elements that I use in my administrative law course. They are very, very simple. Uh, there are three rectangles in a row, representing the three branches of government, legislative, executive, and judicial, and three circles that represent different types of power that a legislature by statute may grant to an executive branch agency. And for those of you who aren't administrative law types, the L in the circle on the screen represents the legislative, or what we call sometimes the quasi-legislative power that agencies may get to make rules and regulations that operate like statutes. So US EPA, for example, makes rules limiting air and water pollution. And the E in the circle represents the executive power that agencies have to enforce the law. So for example, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration conducts inspections of workplaces and brings enforcement proceedings to correct violations. And the J in the circle represents what we typically call in administrative law circles the quasi-judicial power or the adjudicative power to make binding rulings that apply the law to particular factual situations, like welfare agencies, for example, often have power to decide individual applications for benefits. So I introduced these graphic components early in the course, and they remain relevant throughout the course, and hopefully help students tie the course together a little bit. Um, so the next slide shows uh, an, an example of a graphic that I use early in the course uh, that combines the rectangles and circles to illustrate two key characteristics of many modern agencies. One is that they are typically associated with the executive branch of government, even though they derive most of their power from the legislative branch. And the other is that many modern agencies have a, a combination of powers, of types of powers, that we traditionally associate with separate branches of government. So, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, what, now let me move into what I, I think make for effective graphics. Um, first is effective graphics need to be relevant. And by relevant, I, I mean that they need to help students learn or remember uh, a, a subject that you want to teach them better than text alone. And when I talk about uh, relevance in this regard, I, I guess uh, by way of counterexample, I'd say that uh, one, one recurring graphic I see that is not relevant by my standards is, are the cartoons that you often see in books and classroom presentations. I've noticed that law professors seem to favor New Yorker cartoons. And, uh, and I, I, I think they're funny too, and they often relate to the subject under discussion, but rarely do they actually help the student understand or remember the concept. Um, so, by way of counterexample, uh, the, the graphics that, that, that I developed for my administrative law class, I would like to think, uh, actually are relevant and in, in the sense of being helpful to key concepts um, during the course. 
Now, uh, in addition to being relevant, effective graphics need to be obvious. And by obvious, I, I mean that their connection to a relevant subject has to be both apparent and logical. So when I introduce my little rectangles and circles early in the course, I, I hope that students' response is, well, duh, you know, I could have figured that out, I could have done that. Um, I like that response because I think that when a, a graphic is not obvious, um, it requires so much of an explanation that the game isn't worth the candle, that you end up uh, uh, having a, a graphic that just becomes another thing for the students to understand and remember. So it doesn't bother me at all if students find my graphics extremely obvious. Uh, and uh, furthermore, uh, if they find them simple. I think another uh, characteristic of effective graphics is that they're simple. Uh, <clears throat> and by that I simply mean a simple, limited number of shapes, minimum amount of text, very simple text, a uh, minimum amount of arrows and connecting lines that force your eye to move all around without being able to focus on, on anything, one thing in particular. So again, it, it doesn't bother me to think that once I introduce my graphics, uh, students think, well, boy, Professor Seaman, he's a, he's a nice guy, but he's no Michelangelo. And, uh, and that's fine, because I'm not. And I don't think that you have to be um, to develop effective graphics. I think that the, the difficult thing about making your graphics simple is the danger that they will obscure nuances that you do want the students to learn. And I think that the only way to avoid that danger, frankly, is by lots of reworking and experimenting and road testing of your graphics, and also using them by and large to illustrate big picture concepts, what, what's been referred to in an earlier talk as the fundamentals. So effective graphics need to be relevant and obvious and simple. Uh, they also need to be coherent as a whole. And by this I mean they need to be consistent with each other and consistent across the course. So for example, in my administrative law course, one of the things that I teach at the end of the course is the subject of judicial review of agency actions. And in teaching about them, I use the graphic elements that I introduce in the beginning of the course. Uh, and by way of background for, um, for folks who are not uh, administrative law types, uh, 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 when a federal court reviews a federal agency's interpretation of a statute that the agency administers, the court gives differing levels of deference or weight to the agency's interpretation depending on, among other things, whether the interpretation of the agency is made in the course of the agency's exercising its executive power on the one hand or instead in the exercise of its quasi-judicial uh, or quasi-legislative power. And there are a line of U.S. Supreme Court cases that discuss this differing uh, degrees of deference and the next two slides uh, are, are graphics that illustrate two of those Supreme Court cases. The first a graphic concerns a case called Skidmore, in which the U.S. Supreme Court reviewed an agency statutory interpretation that was made in the course of the agency's exercise of an executive power. And then the next slide concerns a case called Chevron, in which the court reviewed an agency statutory interpretation that was made uh, in the course of exercising the quasi-legislative power to promulgate uh, rules. So uh, again, hopefully by using the same graphics introduced early in the course, at the end of the course, it helps students tie things together a little bit. Now, uh, the finally, uh, effective graphics need to be engaging, by which I mean that they need to be easy and inviting for students to interact with. So, for example, I encourage my students to use the, the little circles that represent different types of agency power uh, when they read statutes to mark provisions that grant these different types of power. So the next slide, for example, shows a statutory provision that grants legislative or quasi-legislative power to an agency. In this case, the agency is the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and the provision grants the commission the power to promulgate consumer product safety standards, a quasi-legislative power. The next graphic shows uh, a statutory provision that grants an executive type of power, uh, again, to the Consumer Product Safety Commission. In this particular provision, the power to conduct workplace inspections. 
So um, uh, as I wind up this discussion of what makes for an effective uh, set of graphics, I, I think that, uh, I suppose if I could put it in, in one sentence, um, re reflecting perhaps my own limitations more than anything else, I would say that uh, you don't need to be uh, a Michelangelo to design effective graphics, and that students shouldn't have to be Einsteins to, um, to understand them. Um, one other thought, and that's kind of to, to sound an ambivalent note, um, on the one hand, I, I really do hope you like my graphics. Um, but, but on the other hand, I guess in a way, I sort of hope you don't. Or at least, I hope you think, oh, geez, I could do better than that. Um, and I'm sure you can, and I encourage you to do so in your own courses. Um, students are very tolerant, believe me, of some experimentation. And, uh, uh, you know, just like we say uh, in mo today's modern culture, there's, there's too much graphic violence and too much graphic sex, I think there needs to be more graphic law. Thank you. <laughs>